Thanks for joining our first ever episode of SNCT Talks. We're sitting down, we're sitting down and discussing how best to serve you and make an impact in your life and, and your business as well. So we decided to launch SNCT Talks to give you real education with real advice from real people in the industry. Without taking too much of your time, this episode is going to be moderated by Carl, co-founder of SNCT Marketing. Hi everybody, hello, uh, just waiting for Shamim to go on live. Before I move too far, can you can you wave, Shamim, if you can hear me? Hello. Awesome, 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 awesome. So, just an introduction. Uh, Sarah has already mentioned. My name is Carl. I'm the co-founder of SNCT Marketing, and Sarah is also another co-founder. Uh, when we decide, decided to start SNCT Talks, it was a no-brainer for us to actually get the first episode to be presented to you by Shamim because of what she does. Shamim has been instrumental and has played a very critical role in the growth and survival of many startups and small-sized businesses. So Shamim, please introduce yourself. It's my pleasure, absolutely. Thank you so much, Carl, and thank you so much, Sarah, for inviting me to be a part of this wonderful show. I'm very pleased to be the first person. Uh, this is an awesome, awesome engagement. So my name is Shamim Nabagala Walusin Bin Subuga. I am a human resource professional and proud of it. I have a personal mission to make sure that I create a positive impact not just nationally, but globally. So I'm happy to be making this impact even today as I engage with you. So I am working at Key Sourcing as a talent um, management specialist. So what we do is mostly hiring, that is a recruitment of qualified staff on behalf of other companies. And I am the recruitment manager there. Over and above that, I do serve as the, at the Human Resource Managers Association of Uganda on the Governing Council as the Director of Public Relations and Marketing. So I'm happy to be here, Carl. Thank you so much. Ah, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. So, Shamim, let's just quickly get started. I mean, uh, so let me set a scenario for you. I'm a startup and I have a limited budget. So... What advice would you give me as to who should be the first employee that I hire? What the, role should I do first? Okay, the first employee. Well, in my opinion, because I have had the pleasure of um, recruiting for plenty of startups, I would say I have placed quite a number of people. So the startups that have consulted with me through my company um, I advise them to begin with sales and marketing, I would say. Anything to do with business development, that is sales, marketing, um, anyone who goes out into the field. I would think that this is the fastest way that you can get clients to gain interest in your product or your service and also get the revenue coming in because I know everyone has a business for that main purpose to make sure that they remain profitable. Yeah, that, that would be the first person I would advise. Perhaps you would add on the accounting department to be able to manage the revenue that comes through. Yes. Okay, so now that we've decided, let's say that we're going to hire a sales rep. Now walk us through, walk me through the steps that I should take as an entrepreneur from zero employees to the first uh, person who fills that role? How do, what are the steps I need to take to get a qualified person in that role? 
Well, uh, what you would have to do, I would give you the best practice, uh, which is recommended by both recruiters as well as the Human Resource Managers Association of Uganda. So what you'd like to do when you are faced with a challenge, let's say you have a need, there's a part of your business that you would like to emphasize, that you'd like you know, to gain value out of. So you would have to first sit down and have a job analysis process done. So this job analysis process helps you to identify the content of the job. It helps you to identify the attributes, the activities, as well as the requirements of this job. So once you have all that in place, let's say, let's give an example for the sales and marketing team. If you would like um, to have the best sales and marketing individual, let's say executive, you have to first list down what are they going to do? Are they going to do brand activation? Are they going to be foot soldiers? Do they need to go out in the field or are they going to do digital marketing now that we're in the digital age? So all that has to be listed down. Then we go down to the attributes. Someone who is client facing is going to need good communication skills. They're going to preferably have a good network of people that they can easily reach out to. And for requirement, okay. most people prefer to have someone with the right academic qualifications. But um, the trends of these days, sometimes people are quite flexible. You could have someone who is experienced in sales. However, they did something completely different. So you have to be flexible um, depending on the situation at hand. So um, there, awesome. are basically, there are basically five steps that I can break down for you. So the first is the job analysis, which I've just explained to you. It helps you determine the kind of employees that you think would be the best for that business. Secondly, is the sourcing phase. So you have your job description well laid out from the job analysis. Now it's time to look for the people. So you are okay. looking for someone who has those communication skills, the required qualifications. It's not easy to find people, I tell you. It's not. So usually a lot of people apply for jobs and they just hope that they get it. But you, as a business owner, you know what you're looking out for and you're looking to grow your business. So what you'd have to yeah. do in the first stage, you'd have to advertise, you can send out a job application, or you could also headhunt. Headhunting is where you have uh, the need and you might know a particular person who has the need. You go out there and ask them to join you. Or there's an option mm -hmm. of outsourcing it to a professional, such as myself, someone who has done it before, someone who knows what to look out for, who has that eye to determine if this person is really fit for the job or not. So that okay. is the second stage. Um, yeah. We would go to assessments. So assessments um, is what people call interviews. People, everyone who shares their CV usually has to go through an interview process to be qualified to get the job. So um, a few people get other other people to write their CVs for them or perhaps um, just Google a CV and share it. So assessment is going to rule the wrong people out of that process. So some, um, some recruiters go through a series of assessments, starting with the scoring of the CVs, trying to you know compare it to the job description. You see um, if there's a match, you drop those who don't have who are further away from the match and go on with those who are closer. So once you get um, to the level of having an oral interview, that's when you get to meet the people. Let's say the best five after going through all the processes. If you, if you had to go through an aptitude test, you take only those who are highest because you would assume that they are you know, more, they have more cognitive skills, they have more attention to detail. So those are, there are different um, assessments that you could go through. And finally, okay. you meet the people. 
um, in this current you know, pandemic, most recruiters are meeting their candidates online. So yes. I would, yeah, I would advise that you do a lot of practice in, in line, online interviews. So that's the third step. Is that okay, Carl, so far? You have just two more yes. steps. I'm, I'm following, I'm following. You, okay. Yvonne, we're going to get back to you with, your, with answers to your questions right after. Please go ahead, Shamim. Thank you so much. So we have gone through job analysis, scoring, and assessments. So once you have done all those interviews, some people go through interviews and they meet someone who blows them away, like says everything they want to hear, not knowing their mm -hmm. practice and practice and they are very awesome. Inter they have awesome interview skills. So what would rule them out at that stage is the vetting process. So vetting, we go through background checks. We check their previous performance in case they have worked somewhere. Uh, okay. The professional recruiters such as myself just have to look at their CV, confirm if they actually worked in the places that they do, confirm if there are some places that they did work at but they chose to exclude them from the cv usually there are red flags you, we also check their criminal records just try to find out as much as possible and most most importantly check their references so once we do go through the vetting process then the last and final step would be placement and performance management because it is important some people are really like um dying to get onto the job but there is also there's more work to be done to manage their performance to make sure that they are motivated and to make sure that you provide all the relevant tools to make sure that they get what you want them to get okay awesome all right so now now that we've hired we've gone through all of this in the whole entire six stage process and we finally hired somebody what for you is the benefit the difference between hiring why should i hire them instead of outsource what tasks should i outsource okay that's a very very good question thank you so much carl so okay. um in my opinion i would think you're looking at aspects such as one quality if you usually they say that quality work comes from outside if you have something that's regularly done the quality might be compromised so if it's a let's say professional services which you are sure that needs to be um, supervised by someone else and you might not have the required resources to supervise that you should outsource however if you do have a team in place let's say you have a very well a very good structure you have a manager and you're looking for someone who is going to be below them, someone who's going to report to the manager, there you can hire in-house. So that's one aspect that I would advise you to consider. And secondly, the frequency of the need. Let's say for recruitment services, it's not like you're going to be recruiting. If you're going to be recruiting every day, then you're doing something wrong. Just know that. So something that is a one-off, let's say, um, HR services, uh, marketing services. At times, you need someone who's going to be regularly doing it or someone who's going to focus completely on that task. So such services you could choose to outsource, even um, accounting services, some of them perhaps filing of taxes. In case you don't have daily operations, you could outsource some of those functions. And the skill, of course, you might have a very, very wonderful dream. You have a, an awesome goal that you want to achieve, but you don't have the capability as an individual to achieve that. So if you have that goal and the dream and you want to get it done the fastest way, you could choose to outsource and get specialized people to just put in, give input into what you want to achieve and have it done uh, that way. Or you could hire, but when you're, when you're hiring, you have to 
ensure that you can afford the staff because they are going to be paid regardless of if there's work done. So that's why uh, I will just repeat that it is very, very important to hire the right people. Absolutely. Okay, now we know that a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, they have a problem with sharing their revenue. Uh, they have the question, why should I hire someone when I can do it myself? So why should I hire someone? Okay, um, that's a very good question. And I know most people who try to, you know, do something for themselves, they usually do it out of frustration because they are, some have been working for people for quite a number of, um, a period of time. And they ask themselves that question, why am I doing all this for someone else? Why shouldn't I do it for myself? So at that point in where you decide to say, yes, I'm doing this and I want the money to all come to myself. So that's where most entrepreneurs get it wrong. Human resource is the most important part of any business. And the only way that you realize it is later on when you realize how much input you are giving into your, let's say, your employer for those who started in that way. So uh, most people try to assume that I, I will automate my processes, I will do everything I need to do to reduce the number of people that I need to hire, but there's no way around it. Human resource needs to be there to ensure the success of your business. So um, that's what I can say. It's, more, it's as important as the revenue that you're looking to grow and to gain. And it's as important as the product or service that you're looking to sell. So there's no way around it. You just have to make sure you do it right. Okay, awesome. So thank you for, for joining us. Now, because of your expertise and as a startup, as an entrepreneur myself, I understand that the difficulty that's there in recruiting and hiring people and making sure that you get the people that fit your organization well. So as a, because of Shamim's expertise, we've decided to work with Shamim and get you access to a consultation with her. Uh, everyone who's joined slightly late, sorry about that. Uh, we, we've got an opportunity for you to actually work with Shamim in a consultation where she walk you through and help you review CVs that you've received to fill the right positions in your company. And while we're at it, before I go on, you can also view this. We're going to share the link to this video. We've recorded it and we're going to put it live on YouTube and on our website. So you'll be able to watch from the beginning. Uh, so Shamim will be working with us in order for us to actually get you the right people, the people you need for your business. And we're going to be doing that at 100K a consultation. Shamim, how much do you usually charge to do those uh, CV reviews and consultations? Uh, usually we charge as, uh, let's say, 250. However, if it's a full-blown recruitment, it's usually a higher amount. So 250 is what we usually charge just for the CV reviews. CV reviews consultation. So that's, that's the offer that's there for anybody who's watching this, whether you're watching the recording or whether you're watching live, you can just reach out to us at sncgmarketing.com and we'll put you in touch with Shamim, who will then assist you, or you could actually just follow her on her Instagram handle. Uh, Shamim, what's your Instagram handle? It's Angel Mims. Angel Mims. Okay, awesome. So... Thank you for sharing your experience. Do you have any anything that you'd also want to add on to what you've shared for those that have just joined? Um, maybe we could answer some of the questions that have come through the chat. Okay. So right now we have a question from Yvonne Rafaela, which says, uh, what is the best template for a CV? Okay, I could answer that. So um, someone who looks at CVs uh, for a living, 
I would say that there there might not be a right and wrong template, but one thing is for sure, it has to be organized. So um, what we usually look out for, I'm now speaking from experience, someone who grabs a CV out of a pile of, let's say, 200 or 1,000. So the first thing I look out for in order is the bio, the short bio. Because I'm usually, I know what I'm looking for. Let's say someone who is in sales and marketing or accountant. So that short bio is where, is what catches my eye first. Because most people um, highlight what they are ex experienced in and what they are looking out for. So that's what I look out for first to see if I'm on the right track. If up there it says uh, I'm a qualified accountant, CPA, and I'm looking for someone in sales and marketing, I'll put it to the side. So that's okay. the first thing. The next is um, the education background. Because once I'm, I'm scoring, I'm looking at the job description and I'm looking at the CV. Uh, as time goes, the job description. So you're looking at both and you have to see if it's a match. If the, at least it's a, an exact match or a slight match in terms of the education, I move on. If it's a total um, disconnect, I would hesitate a bit, but I might go on. Next thing I will look at is the work experience. So I know what I'm looking for, and I want to see if you've done the same job at whatever level whether it's something that you've done um, professionally or you did it as a part-time or a voluntary work, I would like to see that you have some experience in that. So that would be the next thing that I would expect to see in the CV. So that's the order. However, it's important to keep it in that chronological order. Let's say you start with your current, let's say if you have a master's degree for education, it should be the first thing I see because I would like to see the best of you. So I look out for the best work experience. I look out for where you are right now or where you have been recently. So that's the kind of order that I would, I would prefer to see as a recruiter. For the template, there are plenty of templates out there. And uh, we're not really picky, but if you get some, something more attractive, it would en entice me to look even more at the CV. So as a business owner, those are th some of the things that you would look out for to match and see if this is the kind of person that you're looking for. Okay, awesome. So there's another question, which is, so how would you help people who are generally bad at, see, at doing interviews? Um, practice makes perfect. So you just have to practice, even if it's with a family member or friend. Get someone, can even Google interview questions and give hand them to someone and say, please ask me these questions. Because one thing that affects people in interviews more than anything is nervousness. If they okay. feel like they are not answering the questions very well, they tend to freeze. So practice is all I can say. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time. You're very busy and very difficult to get. Actually, you're constantly being required to do tasks and to moderate and to take part in all of these human resources talks. So we're very honored to have had your time for this session of SNCT Talks. We're, we have, okay, we have one more question. How does one become detail-oriented? Because this is a thing many people lack. Okay, for detail orientation, um, what I would say is it is also aligned with the practice because um, once you have someone who you can, if you are intentional that you want to improve in whatever it is, whether it's um, detail orientation or any, any specific thing that you believe is your weakness, it's always best to, first of all, accept it. Some people might give you that um, feedback that you're, you're making a mistake here, you're doing something uh, wrong or unacceptable here. Some people take it the wrong way. Some people 
feel offended to hear that. But if you're, you're intentional, you've decided you would like to improve. Um, I, for one, have a team that I am making sure that I, I entice them on attention to detail. So what you have to do there is have someone review whatever you're doing, get someone who is specialized in whatever you're trying to do, and just interest them in supporting you in your journey. That's what I would say to yeah. improve. Okay, awesome. Uh, I think that's the last question. I'll leave the, the floor open for another question if there's anyone who has anything else they want to ask. Uh, there's another question from Yvonne Rafela about aptitude yeah. tests. How does one okay. improve in these? So um, what I would say about aptitude tests, they, they're not technical, meaning they're all about um, your, your ability to, to make decisions and think fast. So all that um, has everything to do with practice. There are a couple of um, institutions that do provide aptitude tests, what I would say is the more you do something, the better you do get at it. So if you go for an aptitude test without any practice at all, that's just a gamble. But the more you do, let's say, puzzles, quizzes, anything that gets you to use your brain, it's like I'm going for a workout. You keep improving on your skills, your mental abilities, and before you know it, you will be getting 100%, though it's, it's very difficult. But with practice, you could um, excel in these. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much for the questions and for joining. Uh, so we're going to be having a episode of SNC2. SNCT talks every Thursday at the same time, which is 6.45 up until 7.30. Uh, feel free to join us. Yes, we can, we can do this every week, uh, but we are going to be changing topics on a weekly basis. So this week we were talking about recruiting. The next week we are going to be talking about branding and we're going to be having a specialized, uh, an expert in branding join us and we're going to be discussing that. An email will be sent, and we will post notifications about this all over the place, so you will definitely know what's happening. Thank you very much for joining. We're also going to be posting this, so you can catch us and review this, re-watch this on YouTube and also on our website. The link will be shared when we post, on, when we post next. Thank you again, Shamim. Thank you for joining and thank you for your time. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thank you. My pleasure.